Hello and welcome back to Moon Clan. My name is Frosty and today we are picking up where we left off. Going to go into autumn now, early fall with Moon Clan here. So last time we did finally manage to get all the murderers out of the clan. Everyone's been brought to justice and yet we are still encountering some issues and... Unfortunately, we have lost a fair number of cats, including Little Heart, who I'm so sad that we lost. And honestly, a lot of the clan was too, because a lot of cats have been grieving. But before we jump into things today, you guys did leave me some comments that there's an update. I don't know if it's for Life Gen or for Clan Gen in general. I'm having some issues downloading that or updating that, so I'm not really sure on whose end that is, whether that's my end or like the server, but I'm gonna have to play around with that a little bit more. Yeah, River. We're gonna have to play around with that a little bit more and make sure that we are not messing up any data in the meantime because while I would love to play with updates, since I don't think I've had any updates to this game for quite a while, I don't want to put Moon Clan's save file in jeopardy at all, and I just haven't had the time to give it the time I need to figure it out. So, rest assured, I'll get there. I'll try and have it done before next time. But no hard promises. If you guys have any tips or recommendations for how to update uh, life gen specifically let me know I also don't know what happened to the life gen discord I was in it and now I'm not in it anymore so that's probably part of my problem but with all that being said we'll go ahead and jump into it today we're heading into moon 90 90 whole moons with frost whisper or well 90 moons for the clan 89 moons for frost whisper all right, so moving into Moon 90 for the clan. Nothing interesting happened this moon for Frost Whisper. He is currently hurt with a cat bite, so he's in the medicine cat den recovering. I guess it's been very uneventful though. Frost Whisper shares favorite prey with Falling Kit. Frost Whisper is annoyed by Fawn Shock's negative comments. We have had quite a few of those lately. And Lyrush brings us uh, some fresh kill, hoping that they remembered what Frost Whisper's favorite was. All right, so that's really nice of Lyra Rush. I think it was Lyra Rush that might have had a crush on us too, but in any case, it's a clanmate just trying to help out someone who's kind of down in the dumps. So that is certainly appreciated. In the meanwhile, it looks like Fawn Shock is not going easy on us, so sadly, we're going to be exacerbating that. Falcon Scratch will always feel their grief, but time has softened it, at least a little. Yarosar has gotten a stomach ache. Hill Petal has gotten green cough. Flip Kit breathes a sigh of relief. Finally, the deep throbbing in their head has subsided. As the herb stores are inspected, we know some of the burdock went bad and will have to be replaced. Alright, at first I read this as Hill Petal uh, has recovered from green cough, I don't know why, but... It's never a good sign when we just enter leaf fall and a cat gets sick with a cough. I don't know if we're gonna have a lot of cat mint, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that now with three fully fledged medicine cats, that won't be too much of a drag. Also, sorry if you can hear River yelling at me. She's being a little bit of a Karen right now, demanding food, even though she will not get fed for like four more hours. <laughs> I don't know why she's like this. Colepaw was seen speaking calmly to a cat from Clay Clan. Uh, this isn't going to count against Colepaw in any way. First and foremost, it could have been speaking calmly about literally anything across the border. And second of all, they are an apprentice, so there's no ramifications for anything they do right now anyway. And that was it. Okay, not too much going on. I'll check out the cats. Yarosar is currently thinking about new ways to care for the clan. He is sick, but just with a stomach ache, so it's nothing very serious. 
He really has been taking good care of the clan, just not necessarily in traditional ways. Uh, he's been the one to root out all of the murderers in the clan and bring them to justice. So for a meat cat, he's really stepped up to the plate. But now that that's out of the way, and hopefully we don't get any more murderers, I think he can just focus on, you know, actually finding ways to nurture the clan rather than get rid of some root problems like that. Needle Dew saw a two late kit playing with a kitty pet. Blue Shade wants to get to know Yarosar better. Hill Petal is cleaning out the den. So even though he's sick right now, he is doing his best to contribute for his fellow medicine cats. Oh, here's Storm Sky all grown up. He's currently proud of his ability to care for his clanmates. I actually am in love with this sprite. That is so pretty. Again, I don't know how well it's going to come across in the video once it's been uploaded since I think the upload does some weird stuff to some pixels I don't even see in editing. But, like, he's still got like a little white face down his body here. Looks like it kind of comes along his paws and then the very tip of his tail is white. The rest of it's like a shade darker gray. So he's a really, really pretty cat. But it's just always weird seeing, like, a really young medicine cat because I'm so used to medicine cats going overtime in their training. Like, they don't graduate till 15 moons or later, sort of, overtime. But he's proud of his ability to care for his clanmates. He grew to be competitive, a philosopher, and an excellent teacher. I don't think he had competitive before. I think it was something more, like, obsessive. But I guess competitive when you actually have people to compete with, like multiple medicine cats, isn't the worst thing. There's probably better choices, but I think his uh, actual traits here aren't the worst things ever. So I'm curious to see how he's going to grow. Pigeon Flick isn't saying more than they absolutely need to. It's been a while since we checked in with her. But she's just been quietly chugging along in the background, and I think this is probably highlighting that fact. We're currently feeling content. And again, we are hurt with a cat bite. Myrush is praying to Sarkland for guidance. And just to double check here, oh yeah, she's got a pretty major crush on us, actually. I'd like to think that sometime this episode we get some kind of confession, be it from Lyrush or somebody else, but I don't know. I'm not holding my breath anymore. I'm starting to think that uh, Frost Whisperer is too much of a Sundere or something. But we are talking to her nonetheless. Huh? You were looking for me? Yes, I got into an argument with Moonfern this morning. I'm not sure what the issue is. They always keep telling me that I need to speak up more and then get angry when I do. I swear, this is the reason why you're one of the only cats I talk to. You make sense. You're reasonable. I'm going to bed, Frost Whisper. I'll speak to you in the morning. I don't know if I'd necessarily describe Frost Whisper as reasonable. Uh, he definitely seems to have some swings in temper. A little bit grouchier. But I'd say reliable, perhaps, since he cares for the clan a lot, especially in the Over the Moon events. Fawnshock is gently bumping their head on the clanmate's shoulder after a heated argument. Huh. That's a new one for me, but it definitely seems a bit of a, like, diffusing tactic or reassurance, maybe? But we are sadly insulting her. Every cat can spit fire when they're riled up, but it's the one who remains cool who wins the fight. That's usually true, but even so, I don't like to fight my niece. Here's Shaded Antler, another new young addition to the clan. She's currently wishing others would stop thinking that they're soft because of their kitty pet pass. She's only 11 moons, so we're going to see her grown up next moon. But she also graduated very early, so I don't think her kitty pet pass is going to hold her back at all. 
but she does seem a little insecure about her abilities in general, so I can see this being a long-standing issue that's going to bother her. Moonfern is gathering moss for the nursery. Moonfern takes some of the excess moss and goes to play moss ball with Burrow Kit, but Burrow Kit accidentally sends the ball flying towards another cat, hitting them in the side. Burrow Kit doesn't apologize at all as they retrieve the ball. Compassion minus one. Moonfern does not have a very gentle touch with the kits, it seems. Charred Rumble is refining skills and recognizing the unique needs of each kit. Charred Rumble tells a story about an apprentice who faces their fears and saves their friend from danger, and Spruce Kit seems a little bit more bold when they leave the den with their tail raised high. Courage won. Charred Rumble, on the other hand, seems to really have grown into the queen role. Falling Kit is a bit cross with Flip Kit for some reason, but we are talking with him. We tell Falling Kit e that we like their pretty feather. Thanks, it's for Sword Kit. Could you help me put it in their nest? I'm hoping that when they see it in Sword Clan, they like it so much she'll come back to Moon Clan and we can play together. Alright, so if Falling Kit is seeing Sword Kit, that means that they are probably having visions and should be a medicine cat. But that being said, it's always really sad to be reminded of lost kits. Flip Kit wants to be big someday. Burrow Kit, despite being a little bit abrasive, wants to snuggle. And Spruce Kit is wishing other cats would stop babying them. Alright, and we're gonna go ahead and jump into patrol, I guess. We are skipping out on Light Gen Patrol because we're hurt. So we'll start off with our messing cats. Blue Shade has no time, either the herb or the object, and so they are forced to give out the search for today. Storm Sky heads out to find Catmint, probably for Hill Petal, but they are unsuccessful. They have to remind themselves that it's okay to fail, and at least now they know where Catmint isn't, and that'll make the patrols easier to find it next time. It definitely would have been nice to grab that now, but for a newer medicine cat in the beginnings of Leaf Fall, it's not unexpected that a cat would come back empty pod either. Raven Song and Colpaw have a good practice session swapping their best tips and tricks for fighting with one another. Father Son Duo. Icy Finn makes everything look easy as they gather quite a bit of prey for the rest of the clan. Alright, our first border patrol is checking the lines when they notice that a clay clan sent a strayed into the territory. They're our ally, but it's suspicious. We follow the scent to the clay clan cat taking refuge up a tree. The cat yells a warning, and our patrol scatters when they hear the cry. Just in time, a large dog jumps at the patrol. Falcon Scratch rallies the, the patrol to drive the dog away, thankfully avoiding any injuries. The Clay Clan Cat is grateful for the rescue. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. But we do improve relationships with them, and everybody on our clan is safe. Ooh. As the patrol is checking the border lines, they hear an odd sound coming from a nearby bush. So this is meant to be just a regular hunting mission. We only have two cats, so Twig Roach and Scorch Runner. Our traits are Calm and Fears, which are basically both directly opposite one another. And this particular patrol, you can either have a chance to catch something, usually medium or small, or you can get ambushed and have very serious consequences like a cat dying. That being said, since we do have Calm, we can choose not to go, so I'm not going to go. If it was just fierce, then we'd have to proceed, so luckily it was Twig Roach there too. And our last patrol also just has a chat with Clay Clan. Honestly, we didn't really have a whole lot going on. We didn't really get anything out of any border missions, and we were pretty unsuccessful with all of our hunts, both for herbs and for prey. So we're going to go ahead and just jump straight into the next moon, moon 91. All right, looks like we're all better from our cat bite. We lead a hunting patrol, our clanmates following our signals as we track a rabbit. Us and our patrol successfully chase off a rival clan. Our victory yowls echo through the forest. 
So it looks like we were definitely feeling a little bit better. Processor caught Ravensong complaining about them behind their back. That's a little surprising. We've always been a bit closer with Ravensong. Processor covered for Charge Rumble on something minor. And Spruce Kit thinks we are nice to them today. Yarasar Simic Ache has left. Oh. Chirpak saved Flip Kit from a big dog but was badly injured. Well, I'm glad that a warrior was defending a kit, but badly injured usually means broken bones, so Chirpak is going to be down for a while. The only thing I'm also wondering is if that big dog came back to camp or if Flip Kit was out when they weren't supposed to be and got in, you know, the path of a very big, dangerous animal. Luckily, Chirpak was there, though. Hill Petal is no longer coughing and sputtering. Their case of green cough is now cured. Blue Shea can't give Hill Petal answers. Their tail is gone, and yet the pain in it remains. Hill Petal cannot catch a break. Poppy Eye was out wandering the territory a bit too long and came back with frostbite. Storm Sky has gotten a stomach ache. Burrow Kit got a running nose. We notice all of our goldenrod has gone bad and will have to be replaced. With some of these events, it makes me wonder if this is going to be a harsh leaf bear around again. If we're already getting frostbite in the middle parts of leaf fall. Oh, okay. So Moonfern is caught outside of the clan's territory. Um, that one's pretty clear, so I'm going to give her a strike for that. And Falcon Scratch has revealed their love to Moscomb, who is happy to become Falcon Scratch's mate. I think that was one we might have been keeping our eye on, but I'm just excited that we finally get some romance happening in the clan. Okay, so Moonfern got their first strike this moon for being caught outside of the territory. She's currently discovering the balance between discipline and care in the nursery. It does make me wonder if she was maybe out wandering around looking for a lost kit, but sadly we do have to just go with what the generator says, at least for this challenge, so I want to try and keep some of it, you know, challenging. And I would like to think that Moonfern would only be out searching for a lost kit, and this is also why she is wondering about the balance between discipline and care. Like, how far is it okay to push the kids and disciplining them so they know it's not okay to do so they stay safe? You know, that just makes sense to me, but regardless, um, she's gonna have to deal with the straight. Also, here is Moss Cone and their relationship with Falcon Scratch. And here's Falcon Scratch's feelings back. So they definitely seem like they're doing very well. And I really hope we get to see some more kits between those two as well. Yarasar saw a kitty pet sitting calmly next to a dog. Needledew is considering using six to help mend broken bones. Blue Shade saw a yappy little dog today. Hill Petal is checking up on the warriors. They are better from Green Cough, but they are not able to patrol due to the phantom pain in their missing tail. Storm Sky is thinking about the warrior code. He is sick with a stomach ache, but he's not letting it get him down. We also saw a kitty pet sitting calmly next to a dog, so maybe we were on a similar patrol. Ravensong is trying to set a good example for younger cats. We are currently angry with him, though. Ravensong curls her lip at you and socks away. Sounds like it's a pretty serious spat, honestly. Snowleaf is wondering how Storm Sky is doing. Honestly, we haven't really had a lot of interactions with him recently. I think he may just be focusing on Yarosar now that he does have a mate. And here is Shaded Antler, all grown up. I absolutely love the blue tinted black cats, especially when they've got the blue eyes. And these white socks are so cute too. So Shaded Antler right now is responsible, great climber, and skilled heart reader. I don't think anything's changed there, but cats change the most when they go between ranks. And like as they graduate up and when they age from apprentice to warrior that's when they start to get their more permanent abilities and traits so it's always good to just check in but she's currently wondering how rabbit tail is doing moonfern lectures fallen kid about times of hardship in clan history but the kid appears completely indifferent 
Moonfern really does not have a good touch with the kids. Tardrumble doesn't believe a story in Apprentice Toll for why they need to be out of camp. I'm not really surprised there either. We are talking to her, so we'll do that first. Did you hear what happened with Shaded Antler earlier? I can't believe they had the guts to do something so out of line. Personally, I wouldn't be caught dead doing something like that. What did they do? You're not going to tell me? <laughs> During Charred Rumble's lecture on clan history, Flipkit is completely engrossed, asking insightful questions that Charred Rumble tries their best to answer. So Flipkit is Courage 1, Intelligence 1, while Fallen Kit is Courage and Compassion, both minus 1. One of those is Moonfern and one of those is Charred Rumble. I think I either need to alternate between the two or we need to talk to Moonfern and see what's going on because she's not... This is just becoming way too much of a trend. Spruce Kid is currently pestering older cats to play with them. We are talking to him. Sniffle, what happened to Sword Kid? I miss them. They're gone. But when are they coming back? Is Sword Kid just haunting the nursery? I don't know if that's cute or morbid. <laughs> Alright, there's not honestly much going on with the cat, so we're going to jump into patrols. Alright, so we're on our life gen patrol. We spot a strange wood path that's slightly elevated with some birds on it. We leap onto it, snagging a bird with our claws. Our clanmates are impressed with our catch. I think it's still a fence. Blue Shade gathers some cobwebs. And Storm Sky gathers some dandelion. Sadly, that's neither Catmint nor Goldenrod, which I think we really do need more of. But that's okay. We at least got something. We head out on a hunting mission with Liar Rush and Twig Roach. The rain seems a constant, unceasing beat, punctuating the steps of the hunting patrol as they march towards their grounds. But there's one less set of footsteps than there should be. Liar Rush can't see Frost Whisper in the watery haze. I don't really know what the consequences of this are, but I think we should try and proceed. Liar Rush nearly jumps out of their pelt when Frost Whisper materializes next to them. Where in Sarkland have they been? But no, Frost had found a copse of trees so thick and overgrown that they're merely damp, not soaked. It's better than Liar Rush could have hoped for, and the hunting patrol can return to camp with a decent haul. A medium amount of prey is brought back. Alright, so we send Yarrowstar out on a border patrol as usual. It's just where his uh, strengths lie. He is joined by Falcon Scratch and Fierce Face, and we hear Cap begging for their house folk to come back. Now, we are in Leaf Fall, and we still have way too much prey. So we are allowed to proceed here and pick up this kitty pet, possibly. We find them collapsed by the Thunder Path, wailing for their house folk. We offer them a place in Moon Clan, at least until they feel better. They tentatively accept. Amber Stripe has joined the clan, improving our relationships with outsiders. Let's go see what's up with Amber Stripe. Alright, so here's Amber Stripe. She's currently getting used to her new home. She's nervous, but an unusually strong fighter. She's 103 moons, but only competent, so she doesn't have a whole lot of experience. She is currently sick with white cough, which is infectious and can be deadly, but isn't as serious as some of the other coughs, so fingers crossed she feels better soon. And this is what she looks like healthy. I'm just such a fan of any torties, but especially like these lighter on black ones. I think Amber Stripe is still a fitting enough name that we'll keep that. Alright, and this is our last mission. Weasel Reed noses some suspicious paw prints, so we have to proceed. But it turns out they were Weasel Reed's own paw prints. How embarrassing. Alright, and with that, we are diving into the last moon of the episode already. Oh! I've actually never seen this happen, but... Finally, it has happened. Okay, so Liar Rush confesses their feelings to you. We have a choice. We can either accept and become mates or reject them. It's not that I'm not picky or anything. I'm honestly very surprised that Liar Rush was a cat to confess. Um, but I'm really curious to see where this goes. So, 
let's see if it works out. Oh, that's a little harsh. Nothing interesting happened this moon. Oh, uh, we became mates with Liar Rush. That's something interesting that happened this moon. But there's not a whole lot going on on this tab here. Processor nods politely as Shirtback passes. Processor has a difficult conversation with Fierce Face, and they now have a deeper understanding of one another. Chirpback always thought Frost Whisper had it all figured out, so they're surprised when we ask for help. Alright, I guess we're having a lot of conversations with Chirpback uh, while they're in the medicine cat den recovering. Oh no. Alright, we'll get to it all in a second. First things first, there seems to be an infection growing in Chirpback's broken bone. That's not good. That uh, can get deadly very quickly. Moscone's tail was badly injured by a dog. Not great, usually not deadly. Blue Shade has gotten a stomach ache. Storm Sky is glad their stomach ache is finally gone. But White Cough has spread around the camp. Primshade, Liar Rush, Snow Leaf, Charred Rumble, Icy Fin, Twig Roach, Yarrowstar, Spruce Kit, Bond Shock, Needle Dew, Fierce Face, and Falling Kit are all infected. Oh my god. <laughs> That is like half of the clan that was healthy. So we're gonna be in some dire straits here when it comes to actually caring for the clan. I don't see any medicine cats that are sick. No, at least not with this. So fingers crossed we can send all of them out to gather herbs and hopefully that will be some herbs to help with white cough i'm gonna send cats out with them if i can i'm gonna check the fresh kill pile again in just a second but if we don't need to do any hunting then i'm gonna send our remaining cats out on you know mess and cat duties and hope they don't make it worse and for miscellaneous shirtback has realized that tom doesn't describe how they feel anymore very nice all right, so we have 291 out of 77 needed. So we have enough to go a couple of moons without catching anything. It's not going to be as much wiggle room as I'd like, but I mean, under their circumstances, we're just going to do our best here. All right, so here's the clan currently. Oh my gosh. This is literally half the clan this is crazy okay well now that we finally have a mate we can do all of the lovey-dovey stuff with them like flirting and whatever the sad thing is now that mate is sick with white cough if something happens to liar rush as soon as we become mates <laughs> i'm not gonna be okay Honestly, all of Frost Whisper's potential love interests are currently sick with white cough, so this has so much potential to go so wrong, and I'm going to be angry if something goes wrong now. But let's check in on cats. Yarosar is thinking about a strange chilic object they saw recently. Needledew is playing a prank on Rabbit Tail. Blue Shade is proud of their ability to care for their clanmates. You just want to see... Do we have anything at all? So it looks like a uh, plantain was used as treatment for white cough. Soren Sky gathered plantain and moss this moon too. So plantain seems to be one of the treatments for this, and we do have seven of it. So I'm keeping all of my fingers and toes crossed that's enough to go around and that the medicine cats can gather more. Hill Petal is teaching the kits how to clean themselves properly. Storm Sky is napping. I'm not going to call him lazy or anything because he's probably being run ragged. And when you're being run ragged, you have to take any opportunity you can get to rest. So we are going to talk to him because he's asleep and that's we are a dream shaper. There's been next to no opportunity to use that in any way. We're going to talk to him. Hey, you leave them alone. Uh, can you believe how cruel some cats are, Frost Whisper? A bunch of apprentices were trying to convince these two kids to sneak into Badger Den. What a bunch of mouse brains. 
No matter what, don't let anyone try to pressure you into doing something you don't think is right. Go with your gut and stick to your own values. That's what's really important. Wise words from a young cat. Amber Stripe, I was really happy to have you on board here, but you got half of my clan sick. I can't be mad at you specifically, but I'm very sad. We're currently playing a prank on Snowleaf. So, um, that would normally mean patrol with Snowleaf, but we can't do that because he's sick. So we'll talk to him instead as our, uh, compromise, I guess. Alright, I'm just gonna go through some cats with the conditions up just so we can kind of see how everyone's doing. Oh, Lyrush is our next cat on the list, though. She's currently feeling gloomy. She's presently righteous, a lore master, and a good sport. Let's go ahead and actually flirt with her because we can now. Ellipses. Okay, then. Thanks, I guess. What have I done? <laughs> you don't even sound like you like me. You just confess to us. Look at this. And then you don't care? Can we try and reciprocate that? We actually have quite a lot of strong feelings for her back. I guess she is feeling gloomy, so maybe she's just not a very good patient when it comes to being sick. Snowleaf is pacing back and forth. We're talking to him. It rained earlier and the camp is covered in puddle. Snowleaf steps in one a little too hard, accidentally splashing Yarosar. Yarosar splashes them back in retaliation, and before you know it, the couple is running around camp, skidding and laughing in the mud. We roll our eyes at their couple behavior, but we can't deny it's a little cute, too. Alright, uh, so that's probably not helping them with their sickness. It is adorable. But it also probably still seems at least a little bit to see Snowleaf being so couple-y with another cat. Here's Shirt back, spending time watching fish in a nearby river. He is still hurt just with the broken bone, quote-unquote. No, uh, white cough there. But we are talking to him. Or, I'm sorry. They are no longer Tom, so we are talking to them. Hurts. Aw. I'm sorry. I would say we'll try and visit you, but I don't think we're going to be visiting anybody in the med den anytime soon. But yeah, just look at all these cats that are sick. Like, just scrolling through them. It's so depressing. Fierce Face is currently playing a prank on Moscone. We're talking to him. Hey, if it isn't my best friend Frost. Come on, I was just about to pick up a snack. Let's eat together. I never really saw us as being very close with Fierce Face, but I guess we have talked to him more than not. Moonfern is currently pondering the legacy they want to leave for their kids within the clan. I mean, it's a really interesting question. Is that like the morals they want to pass on or how they're interpreted by others? Burrowkit keeps attacking even after Moonfern surrenders and Moonfern scolds them for buying hard enough to make them bleed. Burrowkit just shrugs, saying it was an accident and shouldn't be a big deal. Empathy minus one. Yeah, I don't know if Moonfern's going to be cut out to be a queen. She's just not been leaving a good impression. Charred Rumble is understanding the fine line between allowing kids to explore and ensuring their safety. While she and Spruce Kid are sick together in the den, she recounts a story about a misunderstood loner. But Spruce Kid laughs and makes jokes, showing little regard for the character situation. Empathy minus one. I guess at least it's not just Moonfern. But yeah, even with the cats, or the kids, half of them are sick with white cough. So I'm really nervous to see how that's going to shake out. But there's not really a lot I can do. <laughs> I, so I guess we're just going to have to wait till next time, Skip. Next episode. Alright, let's do a light gen patrol, though. During a hunting mission, we spot a large plump squirrel but it's close to Goose Clan border and crossing it could lead to skirmish. Uh, I don't think we should really encourage breaking the warrior code. That being said, I don't know if it's ever going to matter in Lichen events. We're not going to proceed. Our clanmates commend our respect for the code. If that actually netted us some prey, I honestly was considering taking the risk. We're not desperate or anything yet but we're 
probably going to be needing that surplus prey here very soon. And these are all of our able-bodied cats that are presently in the clan. Oh boy. Okay. I'm gonna send Ravensong. No. I... Well, Colepaw is also interested in healing and swimming, so yeah. Let's send the cats that are more akin to healing out on this herb gathering mission with uh, Blue Shane in the hopes that will bring us something good. As Blue Shane pads through territory with their entourage, they feel a presence join them. Blue Shade softly alerts the rest of the patrol of their visitor. And with respectful nods, the patrol pauses, tucking their paws together neatly, and sit to converse with the Sarclan cat. We do gather Goldenrod. I'll send a weasel reed out with Storm Sky because he's also got a healing trait. They go out to tend to the uh, burial grounds for Moon Clan, and they do gather Rosemary. I don't know if it's helpful, but at least the grounds have been maintained. And these are all the cats we have left after that. I think we're going to send out four and three on our requisite border mission and hunting patrol as respectively. So we are on the border mission with Pigeon Flick, Falcon Scratch, and Rabbit Tail. We meet Bliss Clan, a clan we consider allies at the border. We have a nice conversation remarking on the recent weather before parting to continue patrolling. Relationships have improved. Our last hunting mission uh, spots a little lizard in the leaf litter. They go forward together at the same time, unfortunately going into a collision with one another. They miss an easy catch and a very small amount of prey is brought back to camp. At least it's something. And sadly, that is where we are going to go ahead and leave it off for today. So next time we're going to be diving into winter with half of our clan sick or hurt. So I'm really not looking forward to that. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that some cats are able to heal. But even with all the herbs in the world, I don't think we have enough to go around. And I don't think a cat would get sick and then heal in like a single moon's time skip, like two time skips. I could be wrong. I'd like to be wrong. But we're just going to have to see how it shakes out. And I'm not looking forward to having to wait. <laughs> But if you guys have any recommendations for me on how to update this game, I would love to hear that. Again, I'm just being a little bit cautious because I really don't want to mess up Moon Clan's save file, especially now. So, again, any tips or tricks would be welcome. But thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoy. Feel free to check out links in the description below for alternative ways to support me as well as some other social medias I'm going to try and do things on as per usual there. But thank you to Parental Unit for supporting the channel as that support is greatly appreciated right now. But until next time everybody, stay safe, stay happy, I'll see you all then, and bye!